Hi, in this tutorial I'm going to show you how to save data in your React Native mobile application. So because React Native uses HTML5 and JavaScript still, technically you still could use local storage, which is popular with other frameworks like Ionic Framework. However, uh, through the actual React Native documentation, it actually recommends that you use async storage instead because it's been properly uh, modified to better accommodate uh, mobile application development. So for this example, we're actually going to use uh, async storage. So like with, with all my tutorials, let's go ahead and start by creating a new uh, React framework project right on our desktop. So we can say React Native init React project. And this is going to create it right on my desktop. All right, perfect. So with that created, let's go ahead and open this project. I'm going to open it in my text editor here. Called React Project and index iOS.js. All right, so this leaves us with the blank template that React Native gives us. Uh, so and then this this tutorial, you don't actually we don't we're not actually going to use any external components for this tutorial, uh, everything that we need is already bundled with React Native. So let's go ahead and go to our React uh, component list. We're going to say async storage. So now that's added. Uh, so in this particular application, it's going to be simple. I'm just going to show how to input data and have that data from the text field save after every keystroke. Um, and then we're going to go ahead and present that on the screen as well. And that's going to be persisted uh, to, to uh, storage. So with that said and done, let's go ahead. Uh, we can go ahead and wipe out most of this render function. We'll wipe out everything except for the view. The view can stay. So with that wiped out, let's go ahead and add the following. I'm going to say text style equals styles.saved and we're going to create these styles in a moment so don't worry. So for this particular this is just going to be text. So we're going to say this.state.myKey and um, we're going to go ahead and initialize this state so it's going to it's going to be blank when the application starts for the first time ever but then we're just going to go ahead and load the state every time there's a change. So We'll get back to that in a moment. The next thing that we're going to do is we're going to add a, uh, another view. So we're going to say view. Let's go ahead and close that so we don't forget. And inside this view, there's going to be a text input field. Text input. So before we start adding the rest of this text input, it's, it should be noted that we haven't added it to the component list. So let's go ahead and add it to the component list. All right, so that's added. So now we can continue working with it. So for text input, we're going to say style equals, let's say styles dot form input. We're going to say, we're going to give it a, a callback here for on text changed. And when text is changed, we're going to, we're going to use the text uh, that, that it now is and we're going to pass it to a function that we're going to create in a moment. So we're going to pass it to this, save data, and we're going to pass in text. So this uses the whole lambda, lambda type function that uh, React likes to use. All right, so after on text changed, we're going to go ahead and say value equals um, just an empty string. And technically, you, you don't even really need anything there, but, but we're going to add it anyways. So close that off. Now we can go ahead and go outside of our view and we're going to add some more text, just some just some instruction text. So we're going to say text style equals styles dot instructions. Let's close that off 
and we're gonna say it's something like type something into the box and restart your application to see if it is still there just something simple all right so the actual view should be good as of right now uh, before we start adding any any logic we can probably go ahead and modify the uh, styles so that way it looks somewhat pleasant so for example um, let's say for the container uh, we will say flex one uh, let's go ahead and give it some padding we'll say padding 30 let's go ahead and say uh, so justify content center that's good it'll, it'll center all of the elements in the screen align items uh, we actually want to say stretched not stretched I mean stretch sorry uh, so that way everything uh, takes up the full portion of the screen and doesn't uh, resize depending on how many elements show up because we want we want the text field that to take up the full the full width all right the background color can stay uh, the next style that we want we can do form input and for form input let me put a comma there form input we could say flex uh, one we can say height 26 whatever whatever height you want to give it we can say font size 13 we can say border width equals one and finally border color equals uh, a gray so for all fives because we, we don't want it to be invisible we want to show it all right so we can we can wipe out welcome because we're not using that anymore um, and what we can do here is because uh, the instructions happens below our text field let's go ahead and add a margin top we'll give that a five as well and finally what we want to do is we want to add I think we call it saved uh, so this is the text that that is actually saved through the async storage so we can say font size and give that a value of say 20 something large say text align center and we'll say margin 10 keep it simple here all right so at this point in time uh, we have we have everything kind of configured so so we can go ahead and let's open up this project in Xcode we're gonna see what it looks like go ahead and hit play All right, so we got a bunch of errors, um, and that's because we haven't uh, initialized uh, the state my key value. So what we want to do is inside of this class, the React Project class, we're going to add another another function. This is actually a reserved function. Uh, it's going to be uh, get initial state. So let's say uh, get initial state. And we're going to say, we're just going to return an empty object. And we're going to go back into Xcode. And we're going to do a good old uh, control R here. And we've got an unexpected token um, on line 23. So, oh, that's because I forgot a comma here. So I put a comma after uh, get initial state. We'll go try this again. And it didn't error this time. Of course, uh, the state has nothing we still haven't set it uh, but we've made it so that way it won't error out this time which leads us into actually uh, working with the async storage so to do async storage it's going to look a lot like local storage so if if you have uh, experience with local storage you're going to 
have a have a pretty good head start here. But the first thing that we want to do is we want to say uh, component did mount. So this is gonna this is gonna run once as soon as the components mount uh, when the when the application starts, and then it's not gonna run again. Let's add a comma here so I don't forget. We're gonna say async storage dot get item my key that's how it's going to be stored in, in uh, storage here and it uses a promise so inside the promise uh, it's returning a, a value so we're going to go ahead and work with that value that it returns so in this particular example we're going to say this dot set state and we're going to say my key and we're going to set it to value. So now when we want to use this dot state dot my key, it's actually being set when the application loads to whatever value is. So finally the last thing that we want to do is we want to go ahead and create this save data function because uh, we're loading data but we're, we're never actually saving it. So we can do that anywhere. So I'm going to do it after the render function. I'm going to add a comma to that function. And I'm going to say uh, save data function. And the function, again, it actually receives a value. We're, we're passing text. So what we're going to do is we're going to say async storage dot set item my key value alright so now now it's actually set uh, the value is actually set to my key in async storage but we also want to present it on the screen as well uh, so we're gonna say this dot set state my key and we're gonna also set that to value alright so now not only will it l save and then load when we reopen our app it's gonna actually present the text as we go along so I went ahead and saved it. Let's go ahead and go back to our simulator and see if it worked. All right, it says Nick Revoy because that's what I had set it to previously. So let's go ahead and say, this is cool. And see if it, see if that does anything for us. It, it might not uh, because it doesn't look like it changed. So let's go ahead and exit out of our simulator. Let's reboot it. Yeah, so it didn't it didn't change. Let's try it one more time just for kicks. Yeah, so it didn't change. What should happen is Nick Raboy should change as we type along. So let's go back into our source code and see if we can find this problem here. Alright, so it looks alright. One thing I did notice is we never we never set it to uh, done after our promise, which is which is a good habit to do. Uh, as far as everything else goes, let's go ahead and add a log here and see if anything spits out. Go back into our simulator. Yeah, so it's not, uh, it's not reaching that function. So going back here, did I do a typo? Yeah, I, I did do a typo. Now that I look at this, it's not on text change, it's on change text. So pretty sure we don't need this console.log anymore. So let's go back into our simulator. This is a test. Alright, so, so that changed. So I'm going to go ahead and quit the simulator. 
and I'm going to rerun it and see it still says this is a test so that was pulled out of memory it, it, out of the async storage so it, it really wasn't too hard most of this tutorial was actually spent styling the front end uh, rather than uh, doing the actual saving and loading we only really did like eight lines of code for saving and loading we we worked with the, the async storage git item which is similar to local storage dot git item as well as uh, async storage dot set item and then we worked with a bunch of states so it wasn't hard to do this with react native